Welcome to our guide from Melee DPS, where we're going to be showing you the seven things you need to start doing immediately in Solo Shuffle. Today's video will cover a wide range of topics with everything designed to directly improve your rating no matter where you're starting from. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you truly want to climb rating in WoW Arena. We're the only service that offers a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you don't pay. Learn more at the end of the video or click the link in the description below. Anyway, back to the guide. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Skill cap, they're just going to tell us to do more damage and not die. Well, that's not bad advice, but we wanted to give you something more practical. In fact, our first tip might be something overlooked or underestimated by the majority of players, and it's all about camera work. Now, why is this important, you might be asking? Well, the limiting feature of melee is the inability to control positioning. You must go and follow wherever your target goes, which means your field of vision can already feel limited. To demonstrate this, we have a little quiz for you. Take a look at this player's screen. Of course, there's a lot to take in. And now look at this one. Now, which do you think is better for PvP? We hope that we all agree on the second one. The key here is the ease of accessing important information, which can be done with a quick glance. Take a look again at the UI from our first clip. It's actually pretty minimal, but everything is scaled up, which makes the viewing angles really cramped. And even though this might sound like a personal preference, if you have an over-polluted interface or play with a zoomed-in camera, you'll have a way harder time quickly spotting your teammate's positioning and more importantly, checking if you're in your healer's line of sight. Take this case for example. Here we see a player with a really zoomed in camera, making it really hard to note their own healer's positioning or have a good grip on what's happening in the game. This mistake can easily lead to tunnel vision and can be the reason behind most line of sight and overextending losses. A quick way to fix this is by increasing your field of view and having a wider camera angle all while getting into the habit of constantly checking your teammates' positioning and what they're doing. Here, for instance, we have a clear view of our healer, which lets us know if it's safer to push in. This allows us to pay attention to the enemies, like realizing when they want to push in for CC or noticing if anyone's in a position to be easily punished. Without good camera work, you can easily miss out on win conditions, and even worse, it might be the main reason you're losing. With that in mind, we move on to our next tip, making good use of our add-ons. And don't worry, we promise not to make this boring, but you know, in the case that you do want a complete breakdown on this topic, we already have an entire video dedicated to setting up your UI. Add-ons allow you to make the best decisions. Just look at this situation without add-ons and answer, who is the best kill target? And the correct answer is, I don't know we can't see their defensives. Exactly, that's the point. Now, look again with add-ons. Way easier, right? Now we can actually quickly see that the rogue is on stun DR and they still have evasion and vanish, making them the worst target. We can also see that the priest doesn't have life swap, dome of light, rapture, only one charge of pain suppression and no stun DR and the warrior doesn't have enraged regeneration. With that in mind, we can clearly see that whoever doesn't receive the last charge of pain suppression will be the right kill target to attack. It's a free win. Cool, right? Kind of feels like playing chess, and that was a checkmate that even Magnus Carlsen would be proud of. Because of all this, we'll recommend you play with two very key add-ons, especially as a melee, Omnibar and Omni CD. And in the case of Omnibar, you should periodically check on all the enemy's defensives and use that information in your decision making to select targets and spot win conditions. Remember, a slightly tankier class with no defensives is always a better kill target than a squishier class with all their cooldowns. If you want to learn more about setting up Omnibar for PvP, we have an entire course dedicated to it on our website. And lastly, for Omni CD, we recommend to track your teammates' defensives and taking those in consideration before deciding to push in and play aggressive. A great thing, especially when we think of solo shuffle, since there's no communication. And that brings us to our next question. How do you know when to push in 
and when to pull back? Well, there's actually a correct answer to that question and is something we need to have in consideration at all times. Checking Omni CD is just one step we need to take, but we need to do more. Now to start off, let's make clear when it's a good time to push in, and the most straightforward answer is to do so when you have defensives to trade. If you have your main defensive CD and a PvP trinket ready, you're always pretty safe. Here is where our Omni CD recommendation comes into play as this doesn't only apply for your personal cooldowns. There might be situations where you're completely out of defensives but your healer still has a lot of CDs to trade, and yes, those situations are still good times to push. Do keep in mind that being a melee means that you sometimes have to use defensives in order to stay aggressive and deal damage, so trading them effectively also translates to more overall pressure and damage dealt. Ideally, you're using your defensives to stay in the fight instead of pulling out. On the flip side, there are bad times to push, though. We first need to have in mind that some burst or setup base specs like Frost Death Knight or Subtlety Rogue don't have to be pushed in 100% of the time since they rely more on bursty setups instead of consistent damage. For those specs, sometimes it's the best play to hug a pillar and only ever play during your CCs or your burst. Nonetheless, some situations also demand you to stay back and line of sight the enemies, such as when your healer's under crowd control or to respect a strong ranged burst, or the most common situation, which is when your team is out of defensives. Pulling back and hugging a pillar until your cooldown's back can be the game-winning move. Not sold yet? Take this example for instance. Here we follow an arms warrior facing two casters on Nagrand Arena, and after trading his die by the sword, he's given the chance to stay behind the pillar and respect the enemy pressure, yet he refuses and wanders away from his teammates, which is a death sentence if we've ever seen one. Well, that probably settles that matter, right? Now let's follow up to our next tip, and that is when you are in, never stop doing damage. And yeah, we know, this does sound obvious, but you'd be surprised to see how this doesn't happen in practice. Let's think about a relatable experience here. How many times have you been in a situation where you're trying to kill a hunter or a mage, and all they're doing is running away and kiting to Narnia? So you're stuck there, waddling in the center of the map, doing a whopping zero DPS. Feels like you aren't impacting the game at all, right? Now, we're not saying you shouldn't ever chase your enemies here, especially if you're close to a kill. Instead, while chasing, you want to be maximizing your damage by tab-targeting whoever you can along the way. Fortunately, though, there is an easy fix. While waddling around and chasing your kill, never stop doing damage. Everything matters. You could be killing totems on your way, hitting the enemy pad, or, of course, on the ideal scenario, hitting a player while you're on your way to your actual target. Anything that demands healing or takes away utility from the enemy team, or at the very minimum, help you generate resources, can be the difference between you winning the game or not. If you're only tunnel visioning one target all game, you're nerfing your own DPS, and as we all know, damage is king in solo shuffle. But even in moments where you feel like you can't connect to your target, there's usually something you can hit. Now, with that covered, let's move to our next melee tip and probably the most common issue we see all around, target selection. Here's the thing, most solo shuffle games start like this. Target acquired. Pick the squishiest target and train them the whole time. This is where you run into some issues, even though this seems like the right thing to do. Although we highly recommend having an initial target that's easy to kill or that gives you the most uptime, being flexible and willing to swap to the right targets mid-game is key to climbing rating as a melee. Take this clip for example. We're following a 1.9k sub rogue who got lucky and is playing with a mage. They opt for the enemy arms warrior as their initial target, but pay attention on how the enemy boomkin starts to play overly aggressive positioning himself on top of their team, even using a bark skin for no reason, which should be a green light to swap targets. Even though the warrior was the plan in the starting room, the druid is now the juiciest target. This is why we stress monitoring Omnibar to check on defensive cooldowns as a melee, because it instantly tells you who's the most vulnerable. It's not anything complicated, and it really doesn't require super in-depth game knowledge. 
If someone has no defensives left and are in a vulnerable position, you should be willing to deviate from your initial plan. This goes hand in hand with our suggestion to maximize damage by doing drive-by attacks on targets while you're getting kited. Sometimes you have to just accept the fact that you can't connect to someone, and that's totally fine if it means you can recognize a new target to start cleaving. Now this even includes being willing to swap healers. Because damage is so high, healers will often have to burn all of their defensives super fast in the first minute of the game. This is especially true if the enemy team is a melee cleave. If you see the enemy healer has no defensives left, they can be a fantastic target. At worst, you won't kill them, but at best, it means you now have the ability to cleave down multiple targets if the DPS decide to stack. Speaking of healers, we have a tip that every melee should know and adapt in their game plan, and that's to sometimes play goalkeeper for your healer. By now, you probably heard the phrase, hit the closest wizard on a stream or found this out yourself. In those matchups against double caster, your options can feel limited, but sometimes the best thing you can do is just hit whatever caster is closer to your team's pillar. It's no wonder that this strategy became popular due to its effectiveness, and the main idea behind it is protecting your healer. The main issue when playing against double caster is that they can easily bait you across the map, which leaves you stranded in nowhere while your healer needs to roleplay Jason Bourne to cross the arena. Instead, by always swapping targets and hitting whoever pushes forward and is closest to your healer, you're able to keep a really solid formation, making it really hard for the enemy to land CC. This game plan of playing goalkeeper usually gives an edge for the melee team, since you'll be able to outpressure the enemy team and have a higher chance at winning the defensive battle, either by ooming the enemy healer or killing through raw damage when dampening ramps higher. To wrap things up, we have our last and final tip, nonetheless crucial for overall melee success, making good use of your gap closers and mobility. In any PvP meta, being able to have good uptime on your target has always been key. However, while PvP keeps becoming closer and closer to a PvE war of whoever can do more damage and put the enemy team through endless pressure, Having a mobility advantage is even more crucial than ever before. And let's be honest, sometimes it can become overwhelming keeping up with all the shimmer charges, ports, gateways, and rescues that the enemies have to work with. It's at the point where it feels like one misuse of a mobility spell turns you into a walking dummy waiting 30 seconds for your next gap closer while getting owned. Or even worse, Having that sore feeling when you press all your burst on someone just to be completely kited and denied because you did so while your mobility was still on cooldown. Take this clip for example. Here we are following a warrior really eager for combat, to the point of committing two key gap closers with heroic leap and charge right at the get-go, while he could easily walk there mounted or simply charge when in range. Oh. And a uh, quick tip, remember to always use your lowest cooldown mobility spell first, as it'll also come back prior to a longer CD one. Nonetheless, we also see another mistake when he connects, and it's pretty common between beginner and intermediate melee players. It's not slowing the enemy instantly, and because of this, we see that the warlock is able to quickly get away, which leads the warrior to use his second charge. Well, we all probably know what happens when you get so far behind in the battle of gap closers versus mobility, as the enemy warlock is up a port and a gateway from the warrior, getting free range and precious seconds of essentially hitting a target dummy until a charge comes off CD. And our suggestion here is always having a really high uptime on your slows on the enemy, and get into the habit of acting second on the mobility warfare. This means that whenever you can, you want to wait for the enemy to port, blink, or roll prior to you using your death grip, shadow step, or harpoon, essentially putting you a full cooldown ahead of your target. Fixing this matter is not an easy task and will definitely require some self-control and some planning ahead, which can be hard in the chaos of solo shuffle. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, we want to tell you a little bit more about Skillcat. We're the only website that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. Instead of needing to waste all that time painfully figuring out PvP on your own, Skillcapped has streamlined the entire process and is guaranteed to deliver results. 
Our website features epic class courses that teach you the exact fundamentals needed to climb in WoW Arena. And in the time it takes to get a solo shuffle pop, you can learn advanced skills in our Master in Minutes guides. We also have hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries where expert players teach you the secret strategies in order to beat the toughest lobbies. So, if you want to see real rating gains and achieve your goals this season, check out skillcap.com using the links below. Anyway guys, that wraps up today's guide. We want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.